The fact that rates of production and consumption depend on stoichiometry is a little bit of a pain. It means that if I'm going to report a rate of production or consumption, I have to mention which species is involved, and I have to have a sense of what the balanced chemical equation is for the process. This is a lot of information to carry around with a reaction rate. To get around this issue, we can define a standard of rate that doesn't exactly depend on the reaction stoichiometry, something that can be calculated in a standard way, in a mathematically well-defined way, from a given rate of production or, or consumption, any rate of production or consumption that we might decide to measure. This is what's known as the standard rate. And you'll see the standard rate pop up in equations later in this unit and out there as you study kinetics on the internet and whatnot as rate equal to something. This rate on the left-hand side of an equation is the standard rate. You'll rarely see it written out explicitly, but take my word for it, that's what is referred to there. The standard rate is defined as the rate of decomposition of a reactant or production of a product divided by the stoichiometric coefficient of that species. So let's imagine a hypothetical reaction, little a molecules of A going to little b molecules of B. We saw in the last video that the rate of consumption of A divided by its stoichiometric coefficient with a negative sign out front to ensure that this value is positive, is equal to 1 over the stoichiometric coefficient of B times its rate of production. And both of these are numerically equal to a common value. And what is this value? This is the key to understanding standard rate conceptually. What is this number that pops out of this mathematical expression, 1 over B delta B delta T? Well, let's keep in mind from the t-shirt metaphor that anytime little a molecules of a are used up, we can say that one reaction event or one reaction occurrence has taken place. So in essence, what we're calculating here in these expressions, one over a stoichiometric coefficient times a rate of production or consumption, is the rate of reaction events or reaction occurrences with respect to time. And this is the standard rate. The standard rate is the re rate of reaction occurrences with respect to time. Now, a couple of important points about the standard rate. It is positive by convention. That's why we see a negative sign out front of the reactant expression. And its units are concentration per time. The stoichiometric coefficient is dimensionless. It's just a number, right, in the balanced chemical equation. And so the units are driven by delta A divided by delta T, or delta B divided by delta T, and the units there are molarity per time, or moles per liter per time. So while you won't see the standard rate explicitly a lot, it does pop up in equations on a regular basis where you see rate equal to something, and we'll need a mathematical understanding of standard rate when we go to integrate the differential rate laws, which is going to happen at a future point in this unit. Standard rate is a really useful concept for relating rates of production and consumption. It can provide a systematic way for you to work through problems mathematically and in the abstract. So here, for example, in this practice problem, we're told that the first step in the production of nitric acid is the combustion of ammonia, and a balanced chemical equation is given for this here. Our goal is to write equations that relate the rates of consumption of the reactants and the rates of formation or production of the products. And before we dive into that, let's just take a look at the balanced chemical equation and kind of get our bearings. So first of all, one reaction event takes place kind of every time we cross the arrow, right? That means four molecules of NH3 are used up, five molecules of O2 are used up, four molecules of NO are produced, and six molecules of H2O are produced. And I'm gonna be using these colors for these species as we solve this problem. Before I dig in and start writing equations, I think it's helpful here to harken back to the definition of standard rate. So for a general species A, and this can be a reactant or a product, the standard rate is one over little a, its stoichiometric coefficient, dA dt, if we're thinking about instantaneous rates, and we may have a positive or a negative sign out front depending on whether we're dealing with a product or reactant respectively. So let's apply that expression to each of the species in the balanced equation here. We can start, for example, 
with NH3. The standard rate is equal to negative one-fourth DNH3 DT, where the four comes from the four out front of NH3 in a balanced chemical equation. For O2, analogous idea. It's a reactant, so we have a negative sign out front, one divided by five, it's stoichiometric coefficient, DO2 DT, and analogously, for the other two species, one-fourth DNODT and one-sixth DH2ODT. And we can verify conceptually and mathematically that all four of these expressions are equal to each other and they're all equal to the rate of reaction occurrences or reaction events. These four expressions can be rearranged to relate the different rates of production and consumption in different ways. For example, we could multiply it by through by one of the coefficients to just look at its rate of consumption or production as a function of the others or something along these lines. Once we have these expressions written down, we can manipulate them mathematically however we need to determine what we'd like to determine.